Hello everyone, I'm Karen Lawrenson. I'm Publishing Director with the Open Education Network, and I'm going to talk now about the Open Textbook Library. So what is the Open Textbook Library and how does it fit into our open education strategy? Well, the library is really two things. First, it's a resource. It's an online resource for the common good available to anyone around the world. And really our goal is to be a comprehensive referatory that is a one-stop place where faculty can find any open textbook that meets our criteria. And I'll talk a little bit more about criteria in a moment. The second thing the library is, is really part of a strategy. As you know, faculty at member institutions review textbooks as part of the workshop strategy in the Open Education Network. So um, we direct faculty to the Open Textbook Library, invite them to take a look and see if there might be a book there that can meet their needs. And we do that through the workshop, through the review process. And really, the goal there is to connect faculty to open options and introduce them to open educational resources. Now, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the library as it is today, the middle of July 2020. So this is the home page. And here you can see the books that were most recently added listed under new books. And you can also see this feature in development, which is a list of all of the open textbooks currently in development in the Open Education Network. And really from here is where uh, you can search the library using the search box in the upper right. And you can learn a little bit more about our textbooks. So looking at our textbooks, uh, here you will see the four criteria listed about our open textbooks. I'm going to speak in more detail about all of these things in a moment. I'm just wanting to show you where you can find this information on the Open Textbook Library site. Then if you go to FAQs, these are exactly what they sound like, frequently asked questions. And most of your questions about the library, if I don't cover them today, you can find answers to those questions here. There's also a place to submit open textbooks. I invite any of you to submit a book that you think may meet our criteria so that we can potentially add it to the collection. You'll also see that we have a discovery page with MARC records and a CSV file along with JSON API. And then finally, we have a friends section, the uh, different friends and organizations, not an exclusive list, that have supported the library in one way or another. So that's a very quick look at the Open Textbook Library. Now let's dig into a few more details. As I mentioned, there are two goals. The first being that it is a comprehensive referatory, that we try and be a one-stop place for faculty to browse open textbooks. So where do these open textbooks come from? Well, they come from a variety of places, including funded initiatives. So there may be grant funding to support authors in writing and publishing an open textbook. A lot of times those grants are within individual institutions. It may also be the case that an independent author without support from an institution decides, you know what, I wanna write an open textbook and share it freely with my students with an open license. It may come from a discipline collective. Um, a scholarly society decides, you know what, we wanna provide this for our discipline and let's work on it together. And lots of other places. The books in the library do not only come from Open Education Network members, they can come from anywhere in the world and we simply review them to see if they meet our four criteria and if so, we include them in the library where faculty can evaluate them and decide if perhaps one works for them. So let's take a closer look at the four criteria for including a book in the library. First, of course, it needs to include an open license, a Creative Commons license that allows for editing. Now, as an aside, you will find books in the library that have the no derivatives license, 
but just a handful. That's because in the very beginning, we allowed any Creative Commons license, but a few years ago, we decided open means editable, and so we are no longer adding books with the ND license. The second criteria is that the complete textbook needs to be available in a single portable file. So if there's a collection of chapters, that's great, but we also wanna be sure that the whole textbook is available in one downloadable file so that potentially a student can download that textbook when they have a reliable internet connection and take it with them wherever they need to go. The third criteria is some kind of institutional or scholarly society affiliation, or the book needs to be used in more than one location. So let's say an independent author working on their own decides to write and publish an open textbook. We would look to see if that book is also used by someone else in the discipline on another campus. That is what that third criteria is trying to get at. The fourth and final criteria is that the book needs to be the original book or the book of record. And that's simply so that we can keep the library organized for our primary users, our faculty audience, um, and we don't overwhelm them with different adaptations of a book and have them in a situation where they're trying to discern the differences um, between books that otherwise you know, look pretty similar. The exception is if a book has been overhauled for a new audience. So let's say there's a statistics book. If that statistics book has been changed in such a way that let's say the title becomes Statistics for Nursing, and each chapter has been tailored to a nursing audience, that would mean we would add it to the collection because it's now for a whole new audience and um, could be understood to be an entirely new book. So, okay, there are the four criteria. How are criteria developed? Well, as I mentioned, our faculty user is really top of mind. We're thinking about those faculty workshops and we wanna make the experience of faculty who may be new to open education, we wanna make things as easy as possible for them to search and take a look at a book that may meet their needs. We consult with our steering committee if ever we want to revisit criteria. And we're always thinking, of course, about the future. And so the criteria really do evolve. I mentioned already that we used to accept books that included the no derivatives clause, and then we changed that later on. Um, I mentioned that we are collecting the book of record um, unless something has been revised to an extent that it's for an entirely new audience. As open education grows and changes, we will, of course, continue to revisit the criteria to address the needs of the open education community. So what's in the library? Well, right now, there are more than 750 textbooks, and the pace of adding books to the library changes, but there's usually a couple books a week now that um, are new and look to meet our criteria, and we really depend on the community sort of pointing us to those, those books. So again, please always feel free to suggest a book. What is in there is organized by the World Library's Outline of Academic Disciplines. This was a decision we made uh, with the steering committee who suggested we followed an existing structure. Books, of course, are often cross-listed in multiple subjects. And if you hover over the menu, you can see the number of books in a particular subject. So I'm gonna show you that now. You can see business, human resources, and there's a little pop-up that says there are eight human resources textbooks to take a look at. So how do you know what's in the library besides just kind of poking around? Well, uh, you saw the search box in the top right on our library page. Um, I mentioned we also have cumulative MARC and CSV records. And again, those are also live. As soon as we add a book to the library, that book is in our MARC records. So feel free to come up with whatever schedule or system you would like to use locally to update your records based on our MARC files. And then we do also um, include our MARC records in OCLC. And those are not live, those are updated at around the beginning of every month. 
I already talked about where books come from. Um, a little bit more information. Many of you are involved in publishing at your library, and uh, we do also support your publishing efforts through the Open Education Network, and I'm happy to talk with you about um, your thoughts and goals with publishing. Um, and then we already covered funded initiatives, independent authors, and discipline collectives. They can really come from a lot of different areas. So now we're looking at a book record. Uh, this is Anatomy and Physiology that has been published by OpenStax. You can see this is a very popular book for reviews. It includes 48 reviews. That's also probably because it's been in the library for a while. So um, just taking a look at this, you can see in the top left some basic info about the book. It's been written by multiple authors. It was published in 2013. The ISBN is listed there. And then the publisher is a link. So you can always click on that link and see um, more information about the publisher and, and browse other offerings they may have to, to offer. You can see that the book was written in English, listed there under language. And the vast majority of the collection are textbooks written in English. However, there are also textbooks written in Spanish, French, and other languages. Um, and hopefully those collections will be growing. And just to clarify, I'm not talking about uh, language textbooks. I'm talking about um, textbooks written in other languages for a variety of subject areas. Now let's take a look at those orange buttons under Read This Book. That's where you know uh, the different versions that the book is available in. So you can read the book online, you can download a single PDF, you can also order a print color copy of this particular textbook. It is licensed CC BY, and under reviews, you can read the most recent review um, along with, um, if you were able to scroll down on the screenshot, you can see all of the other reviews if you wanted to take a look at all 48 of them. A book record in the library also shows you the table of contents about the book and a little bit about the authors, which is also not shown in this screenshot. But the intention here is just to give you a sense of a book record in the library and uh, take a look at some of the features. Now here is another book with zero reviews. And that's most likely because this book was added more recently. Other faculty may not have discovered this book and taken the opportunity to review it. It also could be that there are fewer faculty teaching thermodynamics and chemistry than there are anatomy and physiology. Um, so you'll really see a variety of, um, of reviews per book in the collection. But again, this book uh, you can see here was written by a single author, Howard DeVoe, affiliated with the University of Maryland. It was published in 2019. Since Howard is the publisher, you can click and see more about um, his publishing project. The book was also written in English and is available in two formats at least. And it also was written and licensed uh, with a CC BY attribution license. About 74% of the books in the library include at least one faculty review. And that number has been consistent across the years, regardless of how many books are in the collection. And so we are very happy to have faculty who are subject matter experts take a look at these different uh, resources and write a, uh, a review for them. And I'll talk a little bit more about reviews shortly. And here's the review criteria. So this has been adapted from BC campus. It's a list of all of the different areas in which faculty write a review for a particular book. We consider this a light review and it gives um, those faculty who are checking out the book and other faculty who may come after them a chance to get a sense of what is included in the book and um, speak a little bit more to their interpretation of its quality. So you can see a breakdown of reviews in the library and that the majority of them are well reviewed and well regarded by their colleagues. There are a few in there, a handful. Um, you can see there who might be rated between one and two stars. 
but the vast majority of them are four to five stars. When we took a look at the uh, Open Textbook Library page, you saw there on the homepage, Textbooks and Development. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about this feature, which was inspired by the Open Education Network community. Uh, they wanted a way to surface what they were working on, what they were um, going to be publishing in the near or perhaps far future, depending on how the publishing project unfolds. And then potentially, um, you know, people can see, oh, at the University of Arkansas, they're working on an introduction to data science. I'm glad to know that's on its way, and I can find someone to contact about that if I have any questions. Um, we came up with this feature in a working group. There are usually a handful of working groups every year in the Open Education Network driven by our members to address different issues in the community. Now, one other thing you should know about the Open Textbook Library is that there is indeed a dark archive. This is in thanks to a partnership with Colorado State University Libraries. And we keep this dark archive just in case something may disappear from the internet, never to be found again. That is highly unusual. Uh, in the four years I've been working with the library, I can think of fewer than you know, three times when that may have happened. And uh, it's just our insurance policy so that if that does happen, we can continue pointing to a file and have that resource available. So that may be of interest to your faculty who have concerns about these resources. There is a dark archive um, that we maintain. Here is a closer look at the submission form. I'm again going to make my pitch. If there is a book out there that you're not seeing in the library and you think it should be in the library, please, by all means, let us know. We really depend on the community to sort of crowdsource these suggestions to keep our collection as up to date as possible to support faculty and students. Now, if you have any questions, again, um, the frequently asked question on the OTL site addresses most questions that come up. Of course, I'm also happy to answer your questions. Um, you are also invited to sign up for a quarterly library update, which you can do at z.umn.edu slash library mail. Thank you for your interest in the Open Textbook Library and your support of the content that's in there and faculty engagement with it. I'm always happy to hear your suggestions for how it can be improved and look forward to meeting and talking with you in person.